Right, hello, I'm Dima from the Good Boy Dog School. Uh, we are a London-based uh, sort of dog training establishment covering lots of different fields, you know, to do with dogs, anything from boarding, walks, uh, dog training classes, puppy school and so on. And my involvement with dogs has been for many, many years. I started as a young kid with a local club until, well, 32 years later, I'm sitting here talking to you and explaining why and what I do. I went into the uni to study dog behavior, so I'm a qualified behavioral physiologist. Well, it doesn't really mean trainer, but I have been working with dogs and training them hands-on for the last 32 years. Now, the physiology of behavior looks into what works and how it works. Whenever people ask me, you know, why the dog does or does not do something, I always ask them about the motivation behind it. The physiology feeds on the grounding, on the reasons behind something. Everything works because of something. So we plant that because of by simply using something that will motivate that dog to work. There are 12 main sort of motivations or things, if you like, that the dog depends on. In their life, you take one of those out and they will sell their soul to basically get it back. So using the food is one of those most easily administered kind methods of training. If you think it is about withdrawing the food and withholding the food, no, it's about delivering the food. It's about the quantity of those reinforcements. So when you actually get there and reward your dog, one reward a day will take the dog that far. You know, 10 rewards will teach the dog to do it so much better. A thousand rewards a day will teach that dog to be a super intelligent in a super short time. This is where we had to look for something that will give us the opportunity to deliver a masses and masses of reinforcements onto a dog that probably doesn't want to play or doesn't want to, I don't know, a piece of cheese or chicken um, over a period of time. So putting the dog on the regime means you don't do it on and off. You start rewarding the dog pretty much for anything you want them to do, anything you want them not to do, and teach them to be absolutely bulletproof around whatever your problem would be. Bicycles, joggers, cyclists, rollerbladers, horses, cats, kids playing football and so on. So you could be teaching these non-involvement exercises by simply rewarding the dog for not chasing, not running away, not barking, not lunging on the lead. And you can be also teaching the dog for compliance exercises, for, you know, look this way, walk away, you know, come and jump over my leg and rewarding the dog for that. So. Um, as I said, bombarding them with this huge number of reinforcements uh, means that they pretty much get this message in no time. And sticking to a regime, so doing it over a period of few days, means that the dog learns to break the previous patterns of the behavior. Let's say they haven't chased that child for you know, a couple of weeks. Most likely that dog will not go back and start doing something that it hasn't done for that long. So yes, I do recommend people usually to stick with it for a few weeks. Two, three weeks, it's not a prescription. It's something that you will discover when you put it into practice with your own dog, to your own ability, of course. So when I put the dog on a hand feeding regime, this travels from the floor up on the counter or into my pocket or into a little bam bag. So when we go out, I can pretty much have that with me anywhere I go. So I wouldn't be walking around the park, you know, having a feeding bowl in my hand, but I often use it in demonstrations so people see I'm not using the treats. I love using treats. Dogs love me using treats. And of course, I sometimes would even spice up the food with something yummy over the normal healthy diet. I use the healthiest stuff and in the quantities that agree with them. So my dogs hardly get a kibble over their normal allowance and they never under eat. They know what to do in order to succeed. They will do pretty much anything they're told to do or to ask to do in any environment. The biggest difference being they want to. So it's an attitude that gets training before anything. So when people talk about how do you teach my dog to do this, I always look at the emotion behind that behavior. You teach the dog to want to do something, they will do the behavior no problem. So whenever you will see me walking my dogs, they always keep an eye on me. When I have a client with the dog looking away, it's something missing, you know, in that kind of relationship. And I found that the hand feeding is prone to give it to you in no time, within a week. That dog will be checking with the owner every few seconds. The dog will be wanting to do the right things in the right time. 
I've probably turned a bit cynical over the years of doing what I do. When people say that my dog is not a foodie, I don't know where this term came from. But the only reason for the dog not wanting to take their food is it's either already dead or it's learned to photosynthesize. Well, because neither of those things is probably, you know, what this person had in mind. That dog will find that food in the feeding bowl, which is filled up on a regular basis, irrespectively of how well or how badly the dog will behave. My dogs start hand feeding on a conditional basis. Conditional basis means you do this, you get that. You do more, you get more. So exactly like that. So uh, when the dog eats from the feeding bowl, and this is the important part of logistics, what if I put a biscuit into the feeding bowl in front of a dog and it will be right there. So he's eaten that biscuit. So now I've lifted that bowl and moved it with Heston, Heston, with the dog. Will the dog follow that? Yes, it probably will. Why? It needs its food. So come on, it can't take that long. Right, so now what if I place the biscuit there but take this bowl a little bit further away? Come on, Heston. And this way. So which dog wouldn't want to follow its feeding bowl? Uh, so just to get the, the normal allowance. And how about doing a little... <laughs> Oops, Heston, spin. <laughs> Good boy. A little pivot or twirl or walking to heel. So these are the basics of come here and walk to heel. But for that two weeks, three weeks period, I become that feeding ball that moves from A to B, encouraging the dog to follow it. So when the dog doesn't want to eat, just ask yourself what you are doing wrong. It's never a dog, and I have been doing it long enough to realize that the dogs need to eat, so therefore they will want to go and get it right. Regarding the length of that feeding process, um, I guess it's probably not the healthiest option to be feeding the dog all day long, unless, once again, the daily ration does not change because of the time you spend feeding. So when I go out for, say, an hour and a half, two hours walk, I will probably spread the whole food over two hours period. If I, let's say, want to jam it all into 15 minutes walking up and down the road just doing the traffic control exercise, I could jam it into 15 minutes. So it's really entirely up to you. You know what I personally spend training the dogs? When I do hand feed, you know, a puppy or a grown up dog, if they get about 10 minutes during the session from me, they're lucky. So usually this I can do at a very high pace over the next five minutes delivering pretty much the whole food in the bowl. So I could be doing this, as I said, without talking to the dog much, without giving many commands to, at, such a, at such a pace that I really sort of finish the whole thing in five minutes. I don't have that much time and it's probably hard to believe that I do have life and I do enjoy doing different things and I have other dogs to hand feed too. So, yes, it can be that five minutes or ten minutes, extend it over an hour, hour and a half, stay there. Good boy. Uh, but it can be just as well, short five, ten minute sessions, twice a day, three times a day, if it takes that, as long as you don't exceed the feeding intervals. What I don't like is big, fat, unhealthy dogs. How I would feed the raw, teen food, cooked food. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing I would just advise you, roll up the carpets or just go outside in the garden and do it over there. You will see me often walking in the fields with a towel hanging off, you know, from my pocket. Why? Because some dogs do not eat dry food. It's not their choice. It's the owners that find it's healthier for them to feed on whatever their diet is. So when we talk about hand feeding, please do not switch the dog's diet. Whatever agrees with them can be hand fed. A problem might be when the dog is on kind of a bones and carcasses. But again, you can always find a mince or a tripe which you can feed for the length of the training and then go back into the sort of carcasses if you like. But I hand fed pretty much every kind of food, uh, you know, throughout my experience. Uh, the worst being liquid food for dogs. Have you tried that? It's fun, you know, when you spread the legs, otherwise you will be covered with it and you try to scoop it up and feed it like from the spoon from your fist, but it's you who become the source of all the good stuff for that dog. And I would suggest that it doesn't really matter what it is you feed, however stinky that is and however much it sticks to your hand, get on with it. Put disposable gloves on, hire some help who wouldn't mind doing this. So I wouldn't understand the reasons why you couldn't do it yourself, but I have met a lot of people who choose not to. 
I know how to get the dogs to be this good and I found what works for me. And with no hesitation recommend hand feeding to absolutely everyone. One of the biggest oppositions to the hand feeding is the people who think that, oh no, my dog should feed freely. They should also choose where to live and how to travel. Yes, unfortunately, we tend to uh, set up their routine, the daily allowances we choose, you know, the sleeping arrangements for them. So that way I also organize their feed the way that suits me. So yes, uh, some of the freedoms I would grant them, no doubt. They do have a freedom to have a nice and healthy life and have a proper diet. Though I do tell them when I need them to sit, to stay, to cross the road, to come away from distractions and when to eat. And I really want them to follow that signal. So I do insist and every single dog I work with eats at the first opportunity, just like this. Good. Teddy? Good. And Heston? Good. And Teddy? Good. Well done. Steady. Heston, pause. Teddy, under. Ted. Teddy, under. Nice. Good man. Ted, over. Good. And sit. Stay. High five. Good. High five. Good. Nice. There are lots of reasons not to do something, but there is always one to do it. If you like what you see, there is no harm in trying it. And I'll tell you, the hand feeding is like any reward-based technique just doesn't do any harm. You might simply not be able to do something enough, you might not be very good at it, but you will certainly benefit from it in one way or the other. Mm -hmm.